All right, I am going to go quickly through, as quickly as I can, go through uh, taking this idea of a simple structure from a flat piece of material, using a laser cutter to um, assemble them. Um, so I'm going to go quickly from this drawing to drawing it in Fusion 360, and then uh, laying it out in Illustrator, which you, where we use Illustrator to prepare our pattern to go to the laser cutter for cutting. So I'll go through that whole process um, in, I'll give myself 20 minutes, see if we can do that. Uh, so what I have here is a drawing of um, four pieces of uh, material. We're going to call it um, just cardboard. We don't know what these dimensions are, so we'll um, create these as variables in Fusion 360. So once we do know the thickness or the size we want, we can adjust those automatically and then create our pattern. Uh, this piece, it's made up of four pieces, and they uh, assemble together using finger joints. So if I took this side panel and we looked at it, um, it basically has a little nub right here called a finger. This distance right here is going to be the thickness of the material, um, and it's going to go through the material and then uh, be flush with the top. Um, Whenever you're doing this, it's always good to, whenever you're thinking about 3D um, design, it's good to imagine what your, what your piece looks like from the different sides. Uh, this is generally called an orthographic drawing. Um, so you can, this is a view of the side of this uh, part and the front. We see the two panels and it's hollow in here. And then the top. These dotted lines indicate uh, there's something behind a solid piece that there's a hidden lines. Um, these are our fingers going through and more fingers and then we see the fingers on the top here but these dotted lines indicate the panels. Um, so we're going to take this and we'll draw it. The good thing about this is uh, we only have to draw the top, one of the top and one of the sides and then we'll just copy and paste since the top and the bottom are exactly the same and the sides are exactly the same. Uh, this construction technique can be used for much more sophisticated shapes, um, but it's just a really simple method that can be extended and you can start kind of creating a frame for your project. Okay, this is Fusion 360. Um, it's you do everything in two-dimensional sketches, and then you can take these two-dimensional sketches and extrude them and create three-dimensional di three art. Um, right now, we're just going to use uh, just one sketch. The first thing it asks you is to pick a plane. Um, right now, on the screen, I don't have, for some reason, there's a glitch happening, and we don't see uh, a grid. Um, but if there were a grid there, I could come up here to this little cube and move it around and we would see the world moving around and we can select the different um, perspectives and planes and and it will automatically go there uh, so we'll create a sketch and the first thing it's going to ask us is to create uh, a sketch on one of the planes and we it doesn't really matter if we're just doing two-dimensional art I like uh, picking the top one for some reason uh, but we're in two-dimensional world and we're going to work in this sketch only for now. All right. Um, so what we have here is we can create all kinds of geometry. Um, we're going to use rectangle. Uh, the way that this um, software works, one way to move maneuver, and I use a mouse, but maneuvering around, if I wanted to pivot, what I would do is, well, first of all, I can zoom in and out using the scroll wheel, and then I can pivot by clicking the scroll wheel and, and then moving side to side. And then now that I can do this, I can uh, do all the kind of maneuvering I need to do to, to uh, select and draw. Um, with, your, with your tools, you can uh, use some of these shortcuts for parts for, uh, for geometry you create you draw up really easily, so like, or you use very often. So for a rectangle, there's an R here, so I can either select it through this, or I can press R. I'm gonna come over here and press R, and now you see the tool has been highlighted, uh, and I'm just gonna create. So we'll start with the side. 
So this is the main panel on the side. And then I'm going to create a, another rectangle for the um, finger, uh, the finger on the top and the finger on the bottom. Uh, right now, I still my tool is still going to create um, rectangles. Press Escape to get out of it. And you can highlight that and delete. Uh, the first thing um, to realize is that, or to the power of Fusion, is that you can constrain geometry uh, in ways that uh, help you um, draw it through description rather than having to uh, use measurements and, and, and constrain things by just giving exact dimensions. Um, so, for example, a rectangle already has constraints. This line and this line are going to be 90 degree angles. I mean, I, it's, but the size is unconstrained, so it just moves around. Obviously, I can move this guy around, and it's not going to affect uh, this rectangle at all. Uh, the first constraint that we already know is that uh, just if we're talking about the trying to describe the, the geometry, uh, is that the finger joint is centered on the top of the panel. Um, so we can come over to this set of uh, tools and use some of the constraint tools. So what I'm going to use is midpoint to start off, because I know the midpoint of this line should be the midpoint of this line. So I'm going to take that midpoint, I'm going to select that one, and I want the midpoints to be together. And it just pulled this whole geometry um, and pulled it together. And then now if I, oops, I still have my midpoint tool there. So if I move this around, I can move it all around, but it's constrained to that part. And I'm going to do the same thing here. Oops. I'm going to undo that because I was selected, had selected the other part. All right. Select and select. And now those guys are there. Um, but we don't have any dimensions. I mean, if our material is really thick, that would make sense. Um, we can just decide. It might be a aesthetic thing or a strength thing, how fat our uh, finger joint needs to be. Um, so what I'm going to do is use another tool I use very often, which is a sketch dimension tool. And you can see it has a D there. And uh, so I'm going to press D. And first thing I'm going to define is the width of the finger joint. So this is 27 millimeters. I'm, I'm just going to say 20. And then um, what I want to do is now constrain this guy to be equal to that one. So I'm going to select, oops, escape, select that line length and that length. And then I'm going to come down and set them to equal. And so now if I change this to say 10, that one should automatically update. And there's several different ways of doing this. Um, and there's no right way of doing, of constraining some of your drawings, but you'll find that there are some ways that are better and some ways that are worse. Uh, oftentimes it takes drawing and then, you know, the, the drawing might get messed up. Just stop what you're doing and start a new sketch. Uh, that's, you'll kind of figure out some of the ways that makes 